The topic of this video is why I feel that Joe Ansack should be the head of a Capcom cinematic universe. And when I mean a cinematic universe, I mean that it should be similar to Marvel, but I, the Marvel studio, and it's kind of similar to how the DC cinematic universe would work as well. But I feel that the films should not be really connected and I feel like certain characters shouldn't be bumping into other characters. I mean, uh, Dante uh, shouldn't be featured in a Resident Evil movie. But I mean that someone should be really overlooking the universe as a whole to make sure that each film is up to a high standards and to produce films that are kind of at a regular base rather than um, getting the properties and waiting for years to actually put it into development. I'm talking about a Capcom Cinematic Universe in which Capcom have a lot of control over the, the projects and releasing films based on Capcom's games in more of a regular basics uh, rather than, you know, over a course of a couple of years. I mean, uh, maybe a Capcom film released per year. I think Joey Anzac should be the guy who should overlook this Capcom Cinematic Universe. So I'm going to talk about Joey Anzac and why this guy should be the lead this actual Cinematic Universe. Why this guy is perfect for it. So in order for me to actually do this i'm gonna have to talk about the guy first joey ansack he started life as a movie extra and he's also a stuntman and he's also an extremely talented martial artist he's trained in ninjutsu he's trained in taekwondo he's also trained in cabrera he's extremely talented martial artist one of his most iconic roles was of course in the born ultimatum in which he plays an assassin and he faces off against the jason Bourne character it's one of the best fight scenes in the actual Bourne trilogy and it's actually considered one of the best fight scenes of all time and of course he himself played the assassin that jason Born fights. He also had a smaller role in Snow White and the Huntsman. In 2010, he released a kind of a Street Fighter short film, and Street Fighter short film was called Street Fighter Legacy. The guy who played Ken in it, um, Christian Howard, he co wrote the, the film and he also produced it. And the short film featured Ken and it featured Ryu, and both of them meet up in the forest and they both kind of duke it out. And it was really cool because a lot of the a lot of the fighting moves in the in the games was used in the choreography of the movie and a lot of the special moves were also used in it. Also the costumes looked pretty faithful. It looked really great for for a smaller budget and it looked really faithful to the actual games and it was definitely better than the previous two Hollywood attempts. Before Assassin's Fist I, I remember listening to a podcast uh, and the podcast was an hour and a half and i listened to a good 10 to 20 minutes of it in this podcast joey ansack was getting interviewed for his new uh, series his new web series which was of course assassin's fist and it was just incredible knowing how much this guy knew about this franchise he knew about all of the main games the spin-off games and he knew of the anime movies the guy was so aware of the street fighter franchise also it never felt like it was scripted it never felt like he kind of had a bit of homework done and then he of course done the interview or podcast it felt really natural it felt like a guy who's really passionate about street fighter more and why he loves the street fighter franchise I actually followed the Street Fighter Assassin's Fist production and it was incredible to see that they used a lot of real locations and real sets and the costumes looked really faithful to the games. The also casting was also on point. Everyone looked the part. A lot of the actors actually built themselves up to physically for the role and they actually got into peak conditions for a lot of fight scenes as well. In about 2014, sp spring 2014, the web series was finally released and of course all 10 episodes were was released and I got a chance to watch it. I will say this, this just blew my mind. It was just, it was perfect. I remember the trailer really got me excited for it but once I seen this I was in blown away by it because it was just so on point. It just felt so faithful, so accurate. The, the cinematography was 
really impressive for like a web series it looked absolutely stunning it looked like hollywood standards and not one point in it did i say well this is kind of a web series and it kind of feels kind of cheap it never felt like that whatsoever it felt like like a, a proper tv budget like a big tv budget or a kind of a big hollywood production characters were also great they're really well written i know the story has elements that seemed cliche driven but the story was quite complex and it flowed really well and it done its own thing and in that sense it kind of it escaped the stereotype and cliche seen in certain martial arts stories it's something i think everyone should check out because it's got a great story it's very faithful and it's got some of the best fight scenes i've seen in 2014 the fight scenes were really well done they're all done with really like wide shots and each shot was were, was quite long so you got to see quite a few combos in which was also impressive and you could really tell that both both the lead actors who played Ryu and Ken could do a lot of the fighting themselves, which was actually really impressive. And I gotta say, Joey Ansack done so much for this production. Like he produced it, he wrote it, he done all the choreography for it, he directed it, of course, and he also played a part in the web series. He played uh, Akumba in it. It's just incredible, like knowing that he done so much for this web series. He and Christian Howard, who played Ken, they wrote, I think at least 200 pages of scripts for this they have enough material to do the sequel series first uh, and they want it to be bigger they want it to be more they want each episode to be 30 minutes to 45 minutes long they want it to kind of have a really high standard for it it's been delayed for a while because they want to just have the right producers to be involved with it and they want it to be as perfect as they want to be. As of this year, Joe Ansack has worked with Capcom to do another series, and that other series was called Street Fighter Resurrection, and it did feature a lot of the crew and cast members from Assassin's Fist. It was released as a way of promoting the newest Street Fighter game. I haven't seen it myself, but I've seen the trailers, and I've, no I've read into it quite a bit, and I've noticed that there is quite a few iconic Street Fighter characters that will feature in it. Of course, I'm not going to mention the characters, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but it does seem very interesting knowing which characters are going to be in the, that are in the series. I remember uh, reading this interview uh, about uh, Joey Ansack and it was, it was released just last year and he was just talking about video game movies in general and the way he talked about the previous Street Fighters was was just perfect. It was just incredibly honest. Pretty much said that the previous Street Fighter movies were just corny and cheesy and they were just completely unfaithful to what Street Fighter is. He didn't like the idea that Gaal was the lead character in the Street Fighter movie. He also didn't like how the direction of the Legend of Chun-Li movie it was just wonderful knowing that he was really honest about it. He was just like, he said what was on his mind. And he said that these two movies were just awful. In the interview, he also mentioned the Resident Evil movies. And once again, very, very honest about this. He pretty much said, if you're a fan of the games, that you're not going to love the movies because they're not faithful to the games. The movies are too action-packed while the movie, while the games are kind of more harvest, which is so true. He also went on to say that the movies are more of a... Mila Jovovic type um, show rather than having the characters in the game kind of play into the movies play into being the leads of the movies the movies instead kind of plays into the success of having Mila Jovovic as the lead star he also mentioned his vision his pit for how he would actually do a Resident Evil movie and of course it's what we always wanted the idea of going back to the very beginning and doing a Resident Evil movie based on the Spencer Mansion, based on the Star Wars unit, based on having Jill and Chris and of course Barry and Wesker, that was his vision. What we always wanted to see in a Resident Evil movie. He also went into details on why um, video game movies suck in general. He went on and talked about that there are several scriptwriters out there that love the video games and would love to be involved with a, a big budget uh, movie based on a certain game and they would have the passion and the drive to actually make a real faithful adaptation but of course hollywood will always go for a type of writer that doesn't have the knowledge the and the understanding of the lore of the video game and once again it was just an incredibly honest statement and these are just some of the reasons why i think joey Ansack should just lead the way for 
a series of Capcom movies, whether he's just, whether he's producing or writing or directing. From the interview that I got, I honestly think this guy would be great for a Devil's May Cry movie because he understands action, he understands Devil's May Cry, uh, and I know he's not who everyone would pick for um, for a Devil's May Cry movie because when people think Devil's May Cry, they think someone like Guillermo del Toro or or Tim Burton, someone of that kind of visual end of it. And that's just my rant, if you will, about uh, Joey Ansack and why he should kind of lead the way for a Capcom cinematic universe. Because this guy is passionate, he knows Capcom games, he knows video games in general, he knows what's wrong with video game movies, he knows how to direct action, he knows how to, to understand lore, uh, video game lore, and that's why one of the reasons why this guy is would be great for a Capcom Cinematic Universe. How do you guys feel um, about the idea of, say, a Capcom Cinematic Universe? Would you like it, or do you think that Capcom should just focus more on developing great games rather than branching out to do movies? I feel that they, they should actually make better um, movies and I think Joe Ansack should definitely lead the way and I'm just going to leave it at that. If you like this video definitely give it a like, be very, I'd be very grateful if you shared it either either and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see.